everyone. Welcome back to Homegrown Passion. Today we're going to talk about pH and why it's important for your plants and how to calibrate your pH probe and to replace it. So stay tuned. And one other thing we're going to do is harvest some chinooko and share some recipes that I use. The pH measurement is of the alkalinity or acidity of your source water. So my source water is 7.0, which means it's very alkaline. So I have to add acid to it to bring it back down to the place that the plants like it. So I have to use battery acid, sulfuric acid. It's the easiest and cheapest way to do it. And for my NFC channels, uh, my leafy greens, I try to keep it at 5.8. For my tomatoes and my vine crops, 6.0 and about the same for the strawberries, between 6.0 and 6.2 for the strawberries. Because you want to have all the pH in the right range in order for your plants to uptake all the nutrients that you provide in the source water. Now I have my kohlrabi growing over here and you can see how big the bulbs are and how nice the leaves look. You don't see any yellow spots on them. You can tell that they're getting all the nutrients they need. They need. It's uptaking everything to make the plant happy and grow really large. So I was out scouting my cucumber plants looking for bugs and whatever else could be wrong with them. And I noticed some of the leaves were kind of yellow. Here, let me show you some of them over here. They just have a little yellow hue to them, hue to them, but I was confused because my monitor in the control tunnel said that my pH and my EC were correct, but I'm just wondering if it's coming through the source, you know, coming into the buckets, if maybe there's a difference. So I do have a Blue Lab handheld uh, meter that checks pH for me. So I'm gonna get that out collect some of this water as it comes through the whole system and see if it's the same as what is showing on my monitor in the control tunnel. I want to show you guys what I got last year for my birthday. You know, most women ask for diamonds or clothes. I wanted a handheld meter, so that's what I got. This thing is pretty cool. I wanted it for one of the main reasons I wanted it is for to check my flowers because I'm really getting into doing my flowers around our deck and around the pool and everything. And I just wanted to make sure I had the pH right for my flowers so they would grow really good. So with this handheld, you can use it either in the water or in soil. It's got this uh, little handy thing that you can make an insert into the soil and then put the pH probe into it because you don't want to just shove the probe in there because it's a very sensitive uh, piece of equipment and you do have to keep it uh, covered with a storage solution so it doesn't dry out because once it dries out it doesn't work anymore so what i want to do right now is you know i'm seeing the problem with my plant inside it's showing what the ph is at one and i just want to make sure that's exactly what's coming out through the emitter so i'm going to collect some water and test it with the ph probe here on the handheld and compare it to the one inside the control tunnel so in order for me to be able to collect the water coming off the buckets i need to turn my timers on because they only come on every 30 minutes, like a minute or so. So I am gonna go ahead and change the one that goes to the cucumbers, turn it on, and have it come on for a few minutes. So it gives me time to collect the water. So I got these little cups from one of the food supply places. They're really nice and small, so it gives you just enough to be able to collect enough water. And I also do use these when I calibrate. So what I need to do is pull out one of the emitters here to the cucumbers, and I'm gonna place it inside the cup here, let it drip until it's like halfway full, and then I'll be able to check it with my handheld meter for the pH. Water sample, probe, turned it on, turn it to pH, take the storage container off of the probe, and I'll stick it into the source water or the water here, the nutrient water, and see where we're at. This doesn't look good, it's going down. It's supposed to be around 6.0, and it's at 3.3. No wonder why my plants look terrible. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna to have to see what's going on inside the control tunnel. And since I'm here, let me check my EC to see how that is. So take the EC probe, click the button to, for EC, stick it in the water and let's see what happens. Hopefully this isn't too far off. This should be about 2.0 to 2.2 and it's, oh my gosh, it's a 3.5. Oh my, it's still climbing. No wonder why my plants look terrible. I better get this fixed up. Oh gosh, well, let's go right into the control tunnel and see what's going on. Oh my gosh, look at what this is showing. 6.8 for the pH. And what was I getting out there? 3.3 .3 or something? I gotta calibrate this. Since I need to calibrate this pH probe, it's at the end of the line where all the dosatrons are lined up to inject the water with the nutrients and the pH adjust and it's mixed in this mixing pot. And so the probes are down here. So as it goes into the greenhouse, we can monitor it and make sure it's a, the right pH and the EC. And since this guy's messed up, I've got to unscrew him. But before I can do that, I have to turn off the water. 
get the pressure off the system because if I unscrew this, water is going to go everywhere. So I'll get that unpressurized, unscrew this, and then we'll calibrate it. Put a bin underneath the probe just in case I spill some water and I'll get it undone from the line here. There we go. And there's going to be water. Not too much, just a little bit of a mess. So I have three cups. One has fresh water, one has number four for calibration, and the other one has number seven for calibration. And they're different colors so you don't get them mixed up. I have the pH probe and the 7.0 calibration solution. And look at the meter. It should say 7.0, but it's saying 8.3. That is way off. Well, the number stabilized, so now I have to hold the press and cal button until it says pH cal. Goes through its little diagnostic. Great, got an error code. I had a feeling the pH probe was bad. It's been two years, and they usually last about a year. So this confirms my suspicion. So I need to replace this. Let's rinse them off a little bit. I'm going to unplug the Guardian, and then I am going to unscrew the connection. And luckily, I was uh, fortunate enough to get an extra one, so I do have one in stock that I can replace it today. Went to my parts cabinet, and here's my new probe. Need to open it up. Let's see what we got. And see it's in its storage solution. So let me get this unwound, hooked back up, and get it calibrated. The new end, attach it to the monitor. Twist it on. Time to calibrate it. Take off the storage solution. Dip it in some fresh water. Put it in the 7.0. Oh, you know what? I forgot to plug it in. Duh. Just get it plugged in. There we go. Let it reset. Now I'm putting in the 7.0 solution. Now this is a lot closer. This is usually where it is when you start calibration. Number stabilized, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the pH cal button. Hopefully we don't get any errors. Doing the calculation. Yes, perfect. Now I have to rinse the probe again in fresh water and do the 4.0 calibration. Put in the solution, wait for the number to stabilize. Hopefully it gets close to four. That's pretty close, that looks good. Stabilized. Oh, nope, move one more. Give it a second here. Okay, pH cal. Calculation. Yep, we're good to go. So you probably noticed the old probe had some Teflon tape on it. Well, I went in my storage unit and my cabinet and I looked for it and I couldn't find any. So I'm going to try this without putting any on. Hopefully I don't get any leaks. I'll get this screwed back into the system. Okay. And I'll get a zip tie and get this buttoned up. And the plant should be a lot happier now with the right pH. Replacing the pH probe is one of the costs of doing hydroponics. The probe was $130. Usually you have to replace them once a year, but luckily I got two years out of that one. 
And now we got it in place. I'm going to watch my monitor and I'll probably have to adjust the dosatron a little bit to make sure it stays right at 6.0. One thing I forgot to tell you, when you adjust your pH, it affects your EC. So you're going to have to watch those monitors too. So the pH is adjusting way too far down, so I got to make the solution less here on the dosatron. So I'm screwing it down. Well, this is close enough. We'll do some fine tuning over the next hour. Two days ago, I harvested 400 heads of Chinooku. It's a Japanese green, and the 400 heads was for my CSA program, and I always plan a little extra. So I'm going to harvest a few for tonight's dinner. I'm going to do a little bit of a stir fry. And these plants are full of vitamin A, vitamin C, potassium, and iron. They smell like carrots. And what I do is I take the leaves off and cut them up into bite-sized pieces. And then I cut the stalks up also because they're edible. And you just kind of stir fry them a little bit, do a little ginger dressing, or there's quite a few different recipes on the internet, and put it on rice and is really a good side dish. I've had questions about starting plants hydroponically and then transplanting them to soil. I do that every year with my flowers. This is probably my fourth or fifth year. I do snapdragons, begonias, petunias, geraniums, just a bunch of different flowers. And once I transplant them into the soil, because they're used to being hydroponic and having water all the time, just water them a little bit extra until they get acclimated, and then they start growing and they're good to go. Well, I'm glad you guys are still here. Kind of a boring video doing the calibration for the pH, but it's something you need to do. And I'm going to try to show you everything that I have to do here in the greenhouse to keep everything running and keep the plants nice and healthy. And so I'm going to end the video here. And like always, please leave me any questions, comments, and suggestions down below. And we'll see you guys next time. Bet you're not used to seeing me like this all bundled up. But I've been working outside all day. We have another building that had some damage from this past windstorm that we had. And some of the soffits in the front had blown off. And it was way too high up to use a ladder. So we rented this really nice electric lift. This thing goes up 50 feet. It's really cool. It goes up pretty high. So I'm thinking, huh, what else can we do with it? Well, my cow barn had some shingles blow off last summer during a storm. And I figured, yeah, got a few more hours left on the rental. So let's go up there and fix them.